Well, as you can see, we got no real road again. The county just finished it too. No trucks coming up here. No matter what, I want to get the cement port. Getting that in there and knowing that we have the ability to start going up with the framing would be huge. You know, and every week and every month now that we wait is a month more that we get into winter. So we're getting to the point where pouring cement is already going to be difficult. And if we can't get this done in the next two, three weeks, it does look like this hotel is going to be punted again for a whole year. All right, so it's good to be back. It has been a little bit since I put out a video, and during that time, I've been very busy, busy mainly dealing with logistics. And the logistics that I've been dealing with all relate to concrete. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that for the past two years or so, concrete has been my nemesis. Uh, that is because right now, we are rebuilding a hotel a few hundred yards that way. This hotel requires a lot of concrete because the basement is quite big. You know, it just feels like there has been roadblock after roadblock. We experienced two back-to-back -back floods that completely washed out our road. You know, these are floods that they were calling thousand-year floods, yet somehow happened in close dissection to each other. Our seven-mile dirt road just below me is the way that everything gets up here. And the problem with the wipeout road is that no cement trucks can make their way up the road until it's fixed. So it's disheartened. You know, about a month ago, I thought progress on the hotel was done. You know, I was just ready to call it for the year um, and pick it up again next year. But next year means May, you know, by the time the winter kind of gets through. So that's, that would have been seven, eight months. And so after thinking about it for a while, I was like, you know what? There's gotta be a way. And so I started talking to some local contractors and this plan kind of started to develop. It was one of those things where whispers of it's possible kind of came together and just a dream team of local contractors came together and we formed a plan to pour the rest of the wall. And that plan is what this video is all about. All right, so starting tomorrow, there is going to be a lot of activity behind me. That is because starting tomorrow, we are gonna begin the process of mixing and pouring 30 yards of concrete and the basement walls behind me. 30 yards is 1,500 90 pound bags of dry concrete mix. That's nearly 70 tons of mix that has to be brought all the way up here. And all of these supplies I'm talking about are being delivered at the bottom of the mountain, which is an eight mile dirt road away, almost a mile in elevation below us. And the reason that we're having to bring all these supplies up here is because no concrete trump company will bring their trucks up our road. The road's too dangerous, there's easier jobs elsewhere, and so it's really up to us. You know, so the situation actually isn't that much different than one I was in just over a year ago. At that point in time, we were just beginning the hotel process and we needed to pour our first concrete into the footers. So the footers are the thing that are gonna support everything you see behind me. And that called for 80 yards of concrete. And so at that time, a guy named Dave Sparks pretty much saved the day. And Dave came over here with his gang all the way from Utah and they brought a mixer truck. And pretty much right here, we mixed and poured 80 yards of concrete in the same day. And at that time, I thought that was the hardest day I might have up here at Cerro Gordo. You know, Dave proved that it was possible. And so after we put up the first lift, so half of the wall behind me, a local company had seen Dave's video and they're like, you know what? If Dave can do it, I think we can bring our trucks up there. So the second pour of concrete was super simple. You know, we just had trucks come up, we had a pump, we pumped around, things were done in an hour or so. Unfortunately, when it came time to the third port, the top half of that wall you see behind me, things haven't been so easy. Turns out after that first run up here, the cement company decided, you know what? No, that road is too dangerous. It's too much of a risk for our drivers. You know, we have much easier jobs everywhere else. We're just not gonna do it. This time, we were taking a little bit different approach. This time, the community that cares so much about this town has all rallied behind it and we're gonna make it happen. We have, probably a half dozen trucks coming. We have probably a dozen to 20 people coming up here to help. I am looking forward to these days almost more than any. You know, they're gonna probably be the hardest days I've ever had up here at Cerro Gordo in two plus years, 
but on the other end of those days means the end of the concrete phase of the hotel, which is a day that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time because that means framing can begin. That means that this hotel can just come back to life, which has been pretty much my guiding light for the last two years. So for the next few days, it's gonna be a lot of transportation, a lot of mixing, a lot of pouring, a lot of learning, a lot of help from a lot of different people, but I'm super excited about it. All right, so everything you see behind me is gonna be underground. This is the basement of the Future American Hotel. The front, this area right here, uh, we're hoping to kind of make it into a speakeasy. I guess it's not too much of a speakeasy if I'm telling everybody about it on video. And this room over here will be underneath the poker room. So the old hotel here had a poker room. And so it's this size. There'll probably be like some type of closet in the back left corner, like there used to be in the old hotel. And then if you were to go into the closet, there's a little stairwell down, maybe a spiral staircase to get into here. And then from here, you can enter into here. This kind of area over here, this is the stairwell. So this is how you'll get from the basement up to the first floor. It's pretty crazy for me because I think every day I walk into buildings, you never really fully appreciate everything that goes into them. But building a commercial structure from scratch, especially way up here and touching every bit of it, just gives me a bigger appreciation of everything that goes into these things. And so when I sit here and I look around and I think, you know, what it took to build the hotel that used to stand here, I just imagine that this will just become part of the story of what had to happen to build this hotel. It's very much the calm before the storm right now because starting tomorrow the pallets of concrete are going to start showing up then we're going to have a mix party but at the end of all that the concrete will be done and it will begin framing and that is something that i've been looking forward to for such a long time i am so excited to get something like wood and to get our framer kyle on the project and just really see this project come to life and there's never been a project in my life that's meant more than the american hotel and rebuilding it. I think this weekend is kind of a accumulation of all of that. You know, we have guys that are coming back from the very first water team. You know, we got Dave coming up, we got Craig coming up. I get so really emotional when I think, you know, a few hundred years from now to think this building will still be standing and it'll be standing because of the result of so many people that cared so deeply about history. But for now, might just enjoy some of this peace and see how it all goes. All right, so the sun's not even up here in Keeler. I'm excited because today the concrete starts to come and it's been a few months, to be honest, many more months than I would have hoped before we had hotel progress again. And I hate the feeling of just kind of sitting around at Cerro Gordo. I don't think I've been up this early in a while. I've been sleeping in actually, but we're gonna watch the sunrise. We got the forklift here already. Boom. I'm gonna go inside, make some breakfast. And today's gonna be a good day because today is going to be another piece of the hotel done. So we got the first load and there's three total trucks coming. So this is one of the trucks. We have the five ton loaded. That is headed up the hill. We already have somebody else heading up the hill. As you can see, we have... Yeah, use this. So, so tie this onto the chain, right? Here, look, this hook's onto the chain. A lot of weight heading up the hill, which is exciting. All this will help complete and finish the basement of the hotel. The plan was over the course of two days, we were gonna get 40 pallets delivered to Keeler. I was gonna go down there with a forklift, unload these pallets and start hauling them up the hill. And we have a five ton military truck here that was given to us by Dave Sparks, which can haul a lot of weight, it's really useful, but it space wise can at most bring four pallets up at a time. And four pallets 
when you're 40 would be 10 runs up and down the hill. And up and down the hill with full load takes about an hour. So you're looking at just an insane amount of time on a vehicle that is prone to breaking down. But luckily, this community, this channel, wants to see this hotel succeed just as much as I do. All right, as you can see, the sun has gone behind the mountains and the day began unloading 14 pallets of these cement bags. Each one of them weighs just over 3,000 pounds. And right now, we are down to one, two, three, four, five, six. And so, we're not done. Uh, the five times actually on its way back down now. That run will be after dark. We can get four on that, so that'll be four of these gone. I might take a little bit more on my truck, so that means that we will have moved 12 of the pallets at least. We'll see if we can get another truck down here and run the rest of them up because tomorrow, same thing's happening, more coming. So it's only gonna get worse. So I wanna get as many up there as we can. And just the process of getting them up there is so hard and we haven't even begun. You know, we haven't even started the mixing, which is just gonna be insane. But that's gonna start on Saturday, it's Thursday. So I need to get these things up there. So for now, I'm gonna do some laundry and get ready to go. Well, as you can tell, it's far after dark and I hear the five ton coming for the next load. We still have to load this in and get back up just to stay on schedule for tomorrow. So it's gonna be a late night. We're hoping to get at least four more pallets up tonight and that'll make us keep us on schedule to get this thing going the next day. All right, so the other thing is that there is no street lights anywhere in Keeler, so we are using the headlights to try to load in these four more into the five ton. It's quite the adventure going on out here. Look at how dark it is everywhere. We're gonna get it done. And where are the others? You know it wasn't easy? We were working into the night, most of the nights. But after about two days of that, we got most of them delivered. Um, as these things happen, the plans weren't perfect. You know, 12 of the pallets didn't get delivered the days we were thought they were gonna be delivered. So that means that only 28 of the pallets made it their way up here. But that would have to do. You know, we had a plan to start mixing on a Saturday. Drop it, drop it, drop it. All right, if you look out there, you can see the guys unloading. You see all the bags. You see people inside of the foundation getting the scaffolding ready. And I'm just stoked, you know? It just fills me with a lot of gratitude that so many people care about this project. So many people are willing to help, you know, no matter what, you know, just say the word and they're here. And a project like this just wouldn't happen otherwise. You know, I don't know how you get a project like this done without having just an army, you know? So thank you guys, you're watching this. You're the reason that this place is coming back to life. We're gonna throw a pallet up there, and we're gonna take it to Chris. Yeah, we'll just take it. So, all right, we're up here at Chris. Cam is taking over filming. Uh, we are in day two. We have the whole crew back, we've got to back. All of this is going into those walls and it'll be the end of the concrete era of the basement, which I think we're all looking forward to. We got a dozen people here, maybe more. We're figuring everything out on the fly. It's gonna be a good day. We got some of uh, some usuals up here as well as some new folks. And I'm very excited about tomorrow. As I see this thing coming together, I just can't help but think of the history of the town the history of the hotel, and just the dreams and ambitions of everybody that came before me. You know, Cerro Gordo was established in 1865 and grew to be the largest silver mine in California. You know, the original hotel hosted some of the most infamous characters of the American West. You know, I think about how hard those owners must have pushed to have it built. And yet, even with all that, it was mostly forgotten about over the years. 
My hope, my dream is to make sure Cerro Gordo is never forgotten about. You know, to set up this hotel so many generations of people can learn from the history here and enjoy the natural beauty. I can't guarantee that that will happen, but I can put everything I can into trying. And that's what I try to do every day. We got a shit ton of power, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we know we can move it with this thing. Okay. I think what we're gonna do is, whoever wants to get out of here right now, we can unload them. Yeah. Um, but now that we know we can move it with this too. It, it can't be out. a full pallet. Okay. You know, it's gotta be about a half. Okay. 10 pounds of chicken breast, 10 pounds of chuck roast steak. We're gonna do an experiment. The experiment is putting the excavator in the back of a five ton because we can't lift the concrete bucket up high enough with just this, put it in the wall. So, cross your fingers. How do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna go perfect. You know, I gotta be honest, after we got all the pallets up here and it was the final day of prep before we started mixing, I was pretty nervous. You know, I didn't know if this thing was gonna go off. You know, one thing goes wrong, it could have been a catastrophe of the whole project. And so it felt like the night before a big game. You know, I remember as we were eating, I wasn't focused on anything but the next day, going through all the possible scenarios of what could go wrong, what could go right, how we could pivot midday. And it was pretty, restless night leading him to the first day of pouring. All right, I gotta take a moment and just give a huge shout out to Element. Element has been keeping everybody related to this project hydrated. You know, even though it's colder outside, we're moving so much concrete that we're just sweating through our shirts. And if you're not careful, you get those dehydration headaches. And over the past few years, by far the easiest way I've found to stay hydrated is the Element. You know, there's no sugar, there's no nothing like that. It's just sodium, potassium, magnesium, comes in these easy little packs. All you do is throw one of these in a bottle, drink it, and you're pretty much good for the day. You know, I've seen pretty much everybody in this project using them over the last little bit, and it's been a lifesaver for us. And so if you're out there, if you wanna give it a shot, if you go to Drink Element, so drinklmnt.com slash Brent, they're giving everybody an eight sample pack for free. So buy anything, they're gonna give you all the different flavors to try out. It's a great way to figure out your favorite flavor. Mine's a citrus salt. I drink this pretty much every single day, but just go to drinkelement.com slash Brent. You can try out that offer, show them some support. They've been a huge supporter of this town, of this project, and it just means so much to me. And you know, with projects like this, there just has to be that atmosphere that we're gonna figure this out no matter what. You know, there's no manual of how to pour 30 yards of concrete at the top of the mountain in these difficult situations, but you figure it out. You know, you can sit back and hope that things were different and hope that, you know, the concrete trucks would have came up and that the pump guy would have pumped it properly or the contractors in the past would have been on time. But the reality is those things aren't gonna happen yet. And I think this weekend was a time where we were all just pumped and it's infectious. You, know, you just feed off of these other people that are so excited about it and you just get the job done. And so with that, began the real work. You know, and the real work was gonna be mixing all this concrete to the correct consistency and getting into the walls. We were using a giant gondola bucket that can hold about a yard of concrete at a time. And so basically the plan was concrete gets cut open, 
Concrete gets put into mixer. Mixer makes the concrete. Concrete gets poured into this giant bucket. Giant bucket gets picked up, hovered over the wall, and then dumped into the wall and then vibrated. It's really important that you vibrate it as much as you can so that the concrete gets everywhere it needs to go. All right, so we got a uh, bucket brigade going on in this wall. This wall we use the gondola and the crane. And we're gonna get there, see how it's going. Try to get everybody to keep moving because we kind of got a window to get this stuff in there. So we're trying to get it all in the hole. Get it. We're moving buckets of pre-mixed concrete with water by hand into the wall and then we're vibrating it to get it down into the cell. We're uh, placing these anchors as we go and uh, yeah, we're killing it. We got, I don't know, maybe a third of it done already. That's, this is awesome. It's a great day. <laughs> yeah. How many buckets do you think you filled today? I have no idea. Probably somewhere around 500. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great day. We're like, I don't know, at least, not quite half, but close. Maybe, okay, maybe not that close, but we're close. <laughs> we're cruising along anyway. First two days was just backbreaking work and progress was slow, to say the very least. You know, these are one of those things that had you had a concrete truck and a pump, could have been undone within an hour. But without it, it took two full days and we still weren't quite done. Got a lot of stuff done yesterday, and uh, I think we'll be able to get a lot done today, and uh, hopefully almost finish this thing today. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so right now we're filling the water so we can have enough water to mix all the concrete we're gonna need for tomorrow. Tomorrow, instead of doing it any other way, we have a concrete pump coming. So the pump will be able to basically be a fire hose of concrete to get these back walls. Back hose is getting sprayed in the face. <laughs> All right, so the stage is set for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we have to bring up 12 more pallets of concrete. Each pallet has 35 bags of 90 pounds each. In addition to this, all of those bags have to make their way up here. They need to make their way into a mixer over there, and they need to make their way into the wall. And the really exciting part about that is after tomorrow, hopefully we'll, we will be done with all of the concrete related to the American Hotel. And it's on a framing, then the kind of ball was into the court of the framer and this building should really take shape and so obviously it's been a really hard road to get here you know the concrete is heavy it's been difficult getting everything to the site but tomorrow may be the end of it so tonight we're gonna try to get a good rest and uh, see what happens tomorrow
nothing is really going as planned right now. Everything seems to be kind of, uh, we're having to figure out a new way to do things. And uh, I don't know, it's gonna be tough, but I know we're eventually gonna get it done. You know, at the end of the two days, I was looking at the back wall and there's just no way to get the excavator back there. You know, at that point in time, I was gonna have to do something else. And so luckily, the guy who brought up the pump the first time brought up the pump the second time. You know, pumps are huge. Pumps are how concrete get into walls typically. And so with that, we brought about 75 foot of hose that laid its way all the way back to the back wall. Almost got this first wall all the way done. We're gonna do the back wall and then finish up this long wall. Hopefully we can uh, get it all done today, but uh, we'll see. Of course, like everything at Cerro Gordo, uh, that day happened to be the day that the wind was just whipping. You know, it was probably one of the most miserable weather days we had in a long time. It was just up to 70 mile per hour gusts, just throwing dust in your face. Concrete's already, already dusty, so that was getting in your face. And it was hard. You know, to be fully honest with you, it was probably the hardest few days of work that I've had up here at Cerro Gordo. I've had a lot. Uh, so we have 12 more pallets that need to make their way up to Cerro Gordo. So we are in a rush because they are pumping up there currently and we want that pump continually running, especially while we have daylight. To be fully honest, these days were really emotional for me. You know, it's been such an ongoing headache, this concrete, that to see it come together, you know, to finally take control and not be at the mercy of some company that will decide whether your dreams happen or not, felt very empowering. You know, but every bag gave me hope. You know, every bag was one bit closer to the basement being done. And that meant one step closer to the hotel continuing. You know, I don't think that Anyone would say that building a hotel in an abandoned mining town with no running water at the top of a mountain is the best financial decision. You know, it's not something that on any spreadsheet makes sense. But sometimes you just feel called to do things because you want to see them exist in the world. And I think that that calling is one that I resonate with a lot. You know, it's one that I think a lot of people resonate with. And so if you're out there and people are telling you whatever doesn't make sense, I hope that you still try to pursue it however you can, you know, even if it's just running a marathon or doing something else. There's a lot of value in it. And I think if everyone was kind of pursuing things that called the most of them, then the world would be a different place. It feels like this cement project has been just consuming my time, you know? It's been why I haven't been taking so many adventures. It's why I've been going in the mines. It's why you haven't been seeing so many videos. And I'm just excited to kind of sit back for a second, let our framer take over, you know, and run the ball for a while with this hotel project and just catch back up on all the adventures and everything else. I can't think of another instance in history where an online community has been so instrumental in physically building something, you know? And I think for me personally, I've never felt such a connection to them or like a love of a building. You know, I didn't even know that it was possible to love a building, but this structure, seeing it goes up, go up has just become kind of like the love of my life. And so right now, I think I'm gonna take a much needed shower. If you see, I've been breathing in concrete for the last few days. I feel grateful for every single person that was here this weekend. I feel grateful for everybody that's been following along on this journey over the last three years, which has been such twists and turns that 
I don't know. It just, it's just amazing. So thank you. So as day two of pouring was coming to a close, you know, as we were pumping, we mixed just enough to finish the final wall. And I gotta say, that was a big moment. You know, these walls are so intimidating. I've been staring at them for so many months, just wanting concrete to be in them and wanting them to be done. That I was stoked, you know, I was beyond exhausted, but everybody there just had that shared knowledge that people are gonna be talking about this for a long time. You know, I think when this hotel is done, the process of it being developed will be almost as noteworthy as the hotel itself. You know, I think it'll be one of those situations like some of my favorite movies like Fitzcarraldo or Apocalypse Now, where the making of them is as known as the movie itself, really. You know, it's these things that are just impossible. These things that probably just shouldn't exist, you know, if it wasn't just for an impossibly strong will and a desire to get back up over and over and over again, no matter how many times you get knocked down. For them to pull off something like that inspires many generations. You know, it's a ripple effect. You know, any reasonable person probably would have packed it in and left. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just really want to see something exist in the world. I know there's going to be more hiccups along the way. You know, no doubt there's going to be huge tasks that we have to overcome. But I get more confident every day in that ability to just figure things out. You know, I think that is what just drives this project forward. And what's going to continue driving it forward for just years to come.